Welcome to Digital Asset News. Take a top stories in cryptocurrency and digital assets and bring them on a bite-sized piece. Today, we've got some pretty interesting stuff. First up, new deposits to Ethereum 2.0 reach a record high in May. And this is just part of the bigger story. The big story to me is that an Ethereum node was launched into space and is now implemented into the International Space Station. Amazing. So we're going to take a look at what's going on with, with ETH. ETH 2.0, the uh, trilemma about security, scalability, decentralization, and as for, and also uh, what's going on with these little bit of delays and how that's going to eat into the market cap of Ethereum for things like Binance Smart Chain and Cardano. So we'll take a look at those two stories on top of, there's a new integration for uh, iTrust Capital, which is for all Dan users uh, when they've actually signed up for their uh, iTrust IRA. And they've actually gone from Curve to Coinbase custody, and it makes absolutely no sense to me. So we're going to talk about that, and we're also going to bring Anthony, uh, head of brand, to come in and explain just why the heck they did that, because it doesn't make any sense. And then uh, that's what we'll talk about today. So let's take a look at what's going on in the market. First of all, it is uh, June 15th. Hey, congratulations. It's 10:20 uh, a.m. El Paso, Texas time. And look, market cap's down a little bit uh, to 1.7 trillion, but we were on a pretty big free fall and uh, like 1.44, 1.38, somewhere around there. And now we've d done a, a heck of a recovery. I cannot see it just uh, maintaining. Uh, Nick Mancini over there at uh, Trade the Chain even said, he goes, look, today we had such a big days uh, over the last two days, expect some red candles. And uh, he was right yet again. I'm going to have Nick on the show on Thursday and uh, smart guy. He's going to tell us what exactly is going on, what he sees coming on in the future. So Bitcoin, uh, 40,000, I'll take it. Ethereum, 2,500, I'll take that. Binance chain, uh, 3067, everything's a little down. Dogecoin's down, eh. XRP, eh, down a little bit, but that's okay. Uh, once they win that uh, lawsuit, they're gonna be up massively. Polkadot, those pair chains are on sale, or, or going uh, for sales, it looks like they're up 5%. They're, they're gonna make massive runs. Everything looking pretty good. And then also, let's take a look at the projected range for some coins. <laughs> Tether reserve, reserve rights, we'll see. Oh, that's gonna go down majorly. Wow, look at all these things. This is not looking good. I've never seen this actually. So let me blow this up so you can see this, hopefully. See this right here? Uh, these one hour projected ranges, you got like in the middle, negative 100, negative 49, negative 23, 21, 16, 15, 13. These are all the ones that are going to, looks like go geez, down. That's not what we're looking at. Let's, uh, let's see what's going up. Not too much. Cardano up by 7% potentially, 91% over the next, no. Well, we'll see how it goes. I'm going to bring in Alex and CJ. We're going to do a tr Trinity trading. So that's what's going on in the, in the trading market. Trade the chain. You can check that out. It's links in the description, all that good stuff. Let's jump into today's uh, big stories. And this to me is fascinating. Um, Ethereum 2.0 going from proof of work to proof of stake and all the different hurdles that they're, they're going through. One of the things that's positive about this is the lockups. Uh, the amount of that's actually locked up uh, not just in staking, but in DeFi. So this was by uh, Christine Kim, excellent article. This was uh, six days ago. And really, first part, eh, whatever. This is what I found uh, important. Uh, as the number of deposits has grown, so has the total staked on the network. In order to be an ETH 2.0 validator, users must stake a minimum of 32 ETH, worth roughly 81,000 at the time of writing. That, that's insane, 81,000, that's, that's a lot of money. Um, just remember, like in March 2020, uh, Ethereum wasn't 2,500 bucks. In March 2020, Ethereum was like $126, somewhere around there. Correct me in the uh, comments, but it was super low during that Black Swan event. Imagine if you would have picked up Ethereum then. Well, maybe in the next two, three years, people might be saying, man, can you imagine if Ethereum was only 2,500 bucks back then? Imagine picking it up back then. And on this channel, not investment advice, just investment opinion. I, I, see, I do see big things for Ethereum. I talk a lot about Cardano and other smart chains, but uh, I just don't believe that uh, Ethereum can have everything. I kind of see Ethereum and some other smart chains as kind of like the, uh, kind of like Bill Gates and Microsoft and Steve Jobs and Apple and uh, maybe a two-party, maybe a three-party system. And we'll see how it works out. Anyhow, the deposits represent 46, 4.6 percent, excuse me, of the circulating supply of Ether, which indicates that the vast majority of ETH is used for other purposes, uh, like market speculation. A lot of us use it for trading, DAP execution, all those good things. So there's still a lot of utility for ETH, uh, just not for staking right now, because, you know, to stake ETH, you need 32, which is a lot of money. 
On top of that, you can't take it out until ETH 2.0 fully integrates and actually launches. And that could be a year to two years from now. So uh, that's a long time for, for lockup, but people still believe in it. And that's what's positive. Since the major, there, oh, and this is the big thing. So there's been some slashing events. The major incident in February ousted 75 validators from the ETH 2.0 network. Uh, there have been eight new incidents of slashing. So if you don't know what slashing is, it kind of differs. Uh, the Cardano network, the Cardano network doesn't have slashing. They just, they penalize you by not paying if you screw up essentially. But for slashing, if, if you are a validator and you do something malicious, either if that was uh, intentional or non-intentional, you do something that just doesn't fit with that mold, then they either shut you down or they penalize you heavily or just kick you off the system. So that's a slashing event. It's a uh, very harsh, but hey, sometimes you need a little tough love out there to make things secure. So this has uh, happened and there's been eight new incidents uh, reported. So just do the right thing, you should be okay. So here's the interesting part on top of what's going on. Um, the Cardano node is aboard the International Space Station. On Thursday, just not too long ago, four or five days ago, an Ethereum node was launched into outer space from NASA's Kennedy Space Center aboard a SpaceX Falcon, that's from the car salesman, uh, rocket, and on Monday, the node arrived at NASA's International Space Station for installation. That's interesting, but it's the fourth one that they've done that. Um, they put it into low Earth orbit, and this was done by Space Chain. I didn't know they even existed. In 2018, they launched up the Qtum blockchain uh, and deployed into Leo. Then in 2019, they set up the first active Bitcoin node on the International Space Station. So well, that's pretty cool. We've got uh, Bitcoin up above uh, as a full node. So everybody who talks about, well, gosh, what about an EMP? It's going to wipe out everything. No, because there's a node in space and uh, can't hit an EMP on that way. So to finish up, blockchain tech, which is traditionally run by computers on Earth, is vulnerable to sudden power outages due to severe weather, physical theft and hacking. You can't do that on a space station. So that's why they did it. So good for them. And this part makes you think. Uh, Zhang, he is the CEO of Space Chain, mentioned that the Ethereum space node wouldn't be able to directly support the network's upcoming upgrade to a POS, which is maybe in a year, maybe two years. Space Chain would need to launch an additional beacon chain node into space to run alongside the first Ethereum space node. And Zeng's hesitant because he doesn't understand. He's like, I don't know if this can actually operate at a very large scale without sacrificing security. So this right here, there's this thing called the trilemma and it was made popular by Vitalik Buterin. And you're gonna, you're gonna have issues, either, that's, either that is with uh, scalability, uh, with security or with decentralization in some way, shape or form. And when you go from proof of work to proof of stake, these are the issues. And there's an there's a article I'm gonna link, you can read the whole thing, but just real quick, this is what he's talking about. And once he's moving over, there is gonna be an issue with decentralization potentially, uh, and also security. So real quick, decentralization, the pros of that is that uh, the more decentralized the system, the more secure, okay, great. For security though, here's the problem or here's the, the, here's the great thing. The primary benefit of robust security is that the blockchain is less vulnerable to attack. The more nodes you have, the more you have to attack 51% to get them all to change over. Pretty tough when you have tens or hundreds of thousands of nodes. So when you go from the proof of work protocol, which requires complex hash puzzles to be solved prior to block production, and a ton of them, uh, this reduces throughput and increases network latency, latency, a strong deterrent for many potential users that are used to near instantaneous transactions. So. That is a problem with security as you try to go from proof of work uh, to proof of stake. And then uh, finally, we have the scalability issue as we go that route. And scalability ensures, which is the good part, that applications runs quickly, which is what we're all used to. We want it just like right now. And uh, But the problem here is that the cost to achieving scalability, primarily, primarily regarding security, is a problem. Quickly growing networks will require a fast consensus mechanism. Everybody has to agree in order to validate more transactions while delivering the same speed to individual users. This can only occur in proof of stake or delegated proof of stake. This compromises decentralization. If the protocol is proof of work, the hash puzzles or mining algorithms would need to be easier in order to have a com <laughs> commensurately fast validation process. This compromises security and also decentralizes decentralization to an extent. So, this is why 
the problem with like Ethereum is we, we just found out proof of work and that's why they're moving to proof of stake. They're going to transition over to uh, potentially a security issue, but it's going to be a lot more faster and it may not be as decentralized. This is what Binance Chain did. They only have 21 validators total. So to, for them to say that it's uh, uh, decentralized is not so much a truism. So, of course, they reduce their decentralization, but boy, is it fast and boy, is it cheap. And this is the issue that has come up with the delay of 2.0. Why is it delayed? What's going on? And I think these, these delays are what really eat into the problems with market share. So Vitalik Buter admitted in his recent interview uh, that it's taken a lot longer. He says, we thought it would take one year to do the proof of stake, but it actually takes six years. Welcome to business. Everything takes longer than what you think it's gonna be. Just add on 4X. He says, one of the biggest problems I found with our products is, that is not the technical problems, because they they got a lot of developers. They have no problems there. It's probably with people. We got a lot of internal team conflicts in those five years. And Buterin said that the biggest people lesson he learned is that if you're building a team, it's important to know who you are dealing with. And he said that the current version of Ethereum has become a victim of its own success with demand pushing network fees to record levels, making the majority of transactions too expensive for the average users. But still, it doesn't matter. For us to get mass adoption, those, those fees have to go down. And everybody right now, I know you're screaming at the, at the screen going, but EIP 1559, we will see when that London hard fork comes out and it's supposed to regulate those, uh, th those fees a little bit lower. We'll see if it does solve that problem. I... Just gonna stay on the sidelines. I'm not gonna, I'm, I'm gonna reserve judgment. And this is the big thing, market share, because competitors are circling uh, what's going on. So case in point, Binance Smart Chain, average transaction fee about seven guay versus 95, which is a 1200% increase. Binance Smart Chain surpasses Ethereum users in count, in user count. The time of writing DAP writer shows that Binance Smart Chain's pancake swap has 23 times more users than ETH's Uniswap version 3. Uniswap version 3 doesn't really have uh, much going on. When I try to go and use version 3, there's not as much liquidity, so I just go back to version 2 and then off I go. And then to finish this up, does Ethereum have the opportunity to take back their market share? And now it says even though BS, Binance Smart Chain is ahead of Ethereum and users, it's only a year old, and Ethereum has a colossal head start of five years. So Ethereum has a far greater pool of developers, altcoins, stablecoins, and everything else. And like I said, Binance Smart Chain is uh, highly centralized. And that's uh, really the big hit. I'm not gonna, I'm gonna skip the last part. So this is it. For business, and that's why this was a good article written on NASDAQ. They understand business, they understand market share. And it doesn't matter if, if you are in the lead and you've got you know, 100% market share. That's great, but you're always going to have competition. And it's important that you upgrade and make improvements because if not, the people that are down here, they just come up and they, they take your market share. And it starts off slowly and then suddenly. Uh, just ask uh, AOL, just ask Yahoo, just ask BlackBerry, just ask Blockbuster. That's exactly what happens. So they have to continually improve. And before you know it, you, that 100% market, sh market, market share goes to 97% then 95%, then 90%, then 80. And before you know it, you're like, where's all our market share? And I think that's one of the things that's, that, that's happening right now. So these are the things that we talk about, and it makes a little bit of sense as to what I'm gonna talk about next, which is I trust capital integrates Coinbase. I don't understand why they're doing this, but okay. So first of all, let me know what you think about that in the comment section uh, before about ETH 2.0, Binance Smart Chain, Cardano, Avalanche, all the smart chains that are coming up. This... I don't understand. <laughs> That's why I need Anthony on here. So first of all, they're moving from Curve, which was an, an industry leader. Nobody really knew about it. Then all of a sudden, PayPal bought it. Now it's the big rage. And they were using Curve for custody of their digital assets in their uh, IRAs. So with Coinbase, they, they're going to have segregated cold storage. That sounds good. Insurance is going to be $255 million. That's that is pretty good. I gave it that. And then financial and security controls, and they're going to do audits uh, through the uh, Coinbase uh, system. Now, here's the here's the FAQs. Do I need to? Do I get to choose where my assets are put into Coinbase custody? Everything will be handled by our internal security teams. You have to take no action. These are the two things: staking and governance. They've been talking about staking for a long time uh, over at iTrust, which means you can stake your assets that you put into your uh, IRA. And then you can double dip 
means you don't pay any taxes on the appreciating value of your Bitcoin, your Cardano, your Ethereum, whatever, and any kind of reward that you get from like Ethereum Cardano, you also don't get taxed. That's why I personally have had this for two years and I'm waiting for it to just explode, which has already been pretty well. Then lastly, they're gonna talk about governance. And uh, governance tokens like Uniswap, Compound, MakerDAO, Sushi, Polkadot, more, carry the rights to uh, vote on the different things that are happening. And they're going to implement that with uh, the Coinbase custody. So let's jump in real quick and talk to Anthony and see just what the heck is going on and why they switched over. Hey everybody, welcome uh, to the show. Anthony, he is the uh, head of brand over there at uh, iTrust Capital. And he's been on the show uh, numerous times to help me understand what the heck is going on. So Anthony, thanks for coming back. What is going on? Why did you guys go from, from Curve, which was like the, the industry leader, uh, well, potentially, and who are, who's now, I believe, working with PayPal, to go, you know what, we're going to go to Coinbase. So straight that out for me, what happened? Yeah, so very happy to be on. It's always good to connect with you and, and chat about everything. So, you know, we were with Curve for quite a few years, and, and we're still with them. So we still have assets there. Oh. Um, funny enough, it was interesting in the early days, everyone said, oh, who's Curve? Who's Curve? Is, is, who is this company? Are they sketchy? We don't know about them. And then obviously PayPal then comes and acquires them and the whole industry finds out what we've known for years, that they're an amazing provider, very secure. And so first and foremost, we all support decentralization, right? We support managing risk. We support being in different areas, expanding communities. And so locking horns with Coinbase custody is logical for us to be able to diversify or decentralize our custody, have multiple partners. Okay. Um, we also strategically are aligning in that direction as well, because Coinbase custody has shown that they are looking to build integrations into the secure infrastructure that we need. So things like staking, inside of an IRA need to be secure. And Coinbase is building that functionality with their wallet system, as well as things like governance. Oh, okay. That makes, because when, when, we when we were reading the actual blog post, that talked about staking. And I was like, and I've been telling everybody, okay, staking's coming, staking's coming. They're like, Rob, you know what you're talking about. So like, it's, it, it's good to actually hear that this, I think is one of the reasons why you went to Coinbase because they're probably more like, we're gonna push this. And maybe Curve's got a different agenda uh, or priorities, I'm guessing. I'm just guessing. Yeah, and so Curve was always good about communicating with us, and and I would you know interact with their team often, and and they have been working on staking, yeah. but maybe they didn't have the dev resources. Maybe they've had to reprioritize. So it seemed like timelines are consistently getting longer, and then when we tell our clients a certain timeline, and then the actual wallet infrastructure is not appearing in what in the timeline we kind of expected, or. or maybe we're incorrectly informed, yeah. um, it, it makes us look bad. And so, you know, Coinbase already, Coinbase, the company uh, acquired Bison Trails, which is a staking as a service provider, which mm -hmm. I believe is providing the staking services for Coinbase custody. And so as you see on coinbase.com, they already have Ethereum 2 staking. So they have this functionality built into their security infrastructure and I'll have our team be interacting with Coinbase custody to find out just how soon we can interact with say, um, Ethereum 2 staking, and then, you know, next likely Polkadot and Cardano staking. And um, it's an exciting time for productive assets that are earning a yield, especially when people can do that inside of tax shelter. Yeah, it's pretty, yeah, it is, it is pretty amazing because like you're really double dipping because you're getting the advantages of, of the appreciation for all the different assets that you have in there just over time. And you don't have to pay capital gains because it's in a, well, for me personally, it's in a Roth IRA. So I just pay, I don't, I just pay pre-tax, not if I go from like a thousand dollars to a million from whatever I whatever I invest in. And I think that's cool. So that makes a lot more sense. And then I really like that 250 some million dollars insurance policy that the Coinbase has. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. And that's another thing with Curve. They had the 50, which was still great. And one of the one of the industry leaders, but I mean Coinbase is on another level with that 255. So we're very happy to have that for our clients. Yeah, that might just cover me. Great. So yeah, no, just, just your account. <laughs> so anyhow, so, so there's that. And then also there's this thing that I always forget to talk about. Well, there's two things. First of all, you were telling me about uh, trading inside the account. Talk to us real quick about that. Remind people uh, yeah. especially in your, in your um, yeah, IRA account. Yeah. So whether, you know, you're an active trader, the listeners, or whether you're just the kind of person who's like me, who 
sometimes make trades for kind of risk management purposes, right? Things are going crazy or I want to change allocation. Obviously, when we're in the US and we do that, it's a taxable event. And so if you want to just make a modification in your portfolio, you might be losing 20, 30, 40% of that trade. And then you just are forced to hold. We're in an IRA, you can adjust your portfolio anytime. No tax events are occurring within the IRA. And then with the, you know, say staking, you know, when I stake my ether, I stake my Cardano or my polka dot, all that's coming in daily when it's outside of the IRA is income. And yeah. I hate to have to increase my income and then pay more taxes when, you know, I think, I think that's a bad tax law in the first place. But when it's inside of an IRA, that yield that's going to be kicking out is not income. It's just compounding in the IRA non-taxable event. Um, and so that's, it's very powerful. And, and it's right now it's more of an education thing that needs to get out there. And the investors like you and your audience who are on the ball, they're going to be in a different level in five or 10 years than the people who didn't plan properly. Yeah. Well, it's, it's it really, it comes down to planning, right? I mean, if you, if you fail to plan, you're planning to fail. Right. And then, um, there's this, so, so real quick, let's say that we, we hear some event that's going to happen. We know, you know, the crypto market is going to drop. And you want to just like, okay, I want to go from the crypto into like, because I don't think you guys have stable coins, but can you just like go from like a Bitcoin to like cash, just hold it in your, your, your uh, IRA account. And then, once exactly. things, and then once things drop, you just put it right back into, okay. So exactly. Gotcha. 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 Yeah. It's, it's FDIC insured cash. So it's real dollars, real insurance and a real bank where stable coins are dollars usually put into a bank on a smart contract. So, you know, what we have is, is, is superior to stable coins in every way in this functionality, because you're not taking that smart contract risk or this pegging risk. It's real dollars. Yeah. In this functionality. So, so people could have said, you know what, uh, Bitcoin was at 64,000. The RSI was crazy. It looked like it was just over, overbought. They could have said, okay, I'm going to put this Bitcoin, these profits into cash, wait for it to go down then buy it right back. And then boom, uh, they have to increase and it's in an IRA and it's tax free. Awesome. Tax free trading right there. Yeah. Great. I love the RSI myself. Very useful metric. <laughs> That's one of the few that I know. So real yeah. quick, so real quick, just so everybody knows, as far as like cryptocurrency and the I trust, you got Bitcoin, Ethereum, Cardano, Dogecoin, eh, whatever. Me, me and you have already went round and round about that one. Polkadot, yeah. Litecoin, Chainlink, Bitcoin, Cash, Stellar, EOS, Uniswap, Compound. And now you guys have Sushi going live today, correct? Yes. Yeah, so breaking news on the Dan channel, obviously sushi is going live today. Sushi is, um, you know, was originally one of these first food coins that seemed like, oh, you know, what is this? Is, is, is this stupid? And it is a juggernaut of a community, a 15 person team. They have sushi swap, which is one of the most, you know, dominant decentralized exchanges. And in the article that's going to be releasing, we go into Bento Box, we go into Miso. These are new projects that are all under the same token, sushi. They're owned in the same ecosystem with that's going to be lending. That's going to be a sort of an IDO type of system. And people are sleeping on sushi in my opinion and they're going to wake up soon and the investors can now hold it in their ira before the world even knows what's really going on see now i was because i was wondering like why did voyager list sushi why are all these people places listening to you now i know all right cool so that's a little insider information well not insider but thanks anthony and then lastly yeah. i will just say this also on top of that for all everybody who likes gold and silver i personally like it myself i own gold and silver in my ira and you can do that and i believe it's it's stored in the, yeah, it's stored in the Royal Canadian Mint. So if you're into precious metals, uh, they've also got that. Anyhow, definitely. That's it. And so everyone just needs to get on, you know, go to the website, use promo code Dan, D-A-N, you know, open up an account. It's a free account uh, until you fund it right after it has the small monthly fee, but you can just make a free account, take a look at it. Um, for the investors who are in this long-term or even midterm and they want the tax advantages, it's huge. Yeah, it's huge. And then uh, I did a, a complete walkthrough video. It's about 18, 19 minutes or so. I'll link at the end. But uh, Anthony, uh, any final words of wisdom for the investors out there in the crypto land? I'd say keep listening to Rob slash Dan <laughs> if you want to do good. That's it. I like that. All right, everybody. So that's it. Anthony, thanks for stopping by. Let's jump back. All right. So I hope that made a lot of sense. It makes more sense to me. So Anthony, thanks for coming on. Also, if you're looking to start a uh, an IRA, just click in the link. Uh, there's a link in the description below. And I do a uh, just a quick video and talk about what the difference is between a traditional, a SEP, and a Roth IRA is who is uh, who can actually start these up and how it all works. 
So uh, check out that link in the description below. And that is it for today. So first of all, thanks for sticking with me. It's a little bit longer, but a lot of things going on. Uh, if you liked the video, found some value, give it a thumbs up. Also consider subscribing. A lot of things we talk about are very time sensitive. And that's it for today. Thanks so much. I appreciate it. And we'll see you in the next one.